What is going on everyone? My name is Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the left side of the map, playing as Ra. It's Mr. Clean himself, Squash. And he is going up against none other than one of the, uh, the greatest playing at the moment. He's playing as Hades at the moment. Uh, he's in the blue color and his name is Kimo. Kimo coming off the back of, I believe he won the recent, uh, spoilers if you haven't seen it, Metaplays tournament. Uh, I believe he came first in that one, taking out a whole bunch of really, really strong players. Uh, Shadow Facts included, I think, in the finals. A really, really good tournament, really good uh, games played. They're definitely worth checking out. But we've got a... Uh, Another game here, Chemo versus Squash. Interested to see what Squash does here with Ra because Squash is uh, just an incredibly thought through player. He doesn't, generally speaking, he doesn't do anything that doesn't really make sense. So uh, we'll see what he's going to come up with in this game. He's playing, he's playing Ra, so his build order is going to be fairly clean. He is doing something that I don't do, which is gone five onto food straight away. He does, I do recall something like three or four years ago, Squash used to say his Ra is not that good, actually. It's kind of like a cheesy team game Ra in that it's cheesy because uh, it has a lot of weaknesses. But if he doesn't, if those weaknesses don't get exploited, he's going to be incredibly big in the game. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see what he's going to come up with here. Uh, what I like to do with Ra recently is when I do this loop with the Pharaoh, I'm looking for a second hunt patch to send villagers to because oftentimes you eat through all this hunt, you move out onto that second hunt patch and your opponent sends like an Ajax or a Jason in to, uh, to get some pain in here. Now we do see that there's a beautiful Auroch back here. Katoska bot's coming in here for Kimo, going to be shanking that pharaoh back home. So we'll see how that's going to... Well, I mean, he's obviously going to send home and he's going to be fine. Probably pop it back onto the granary. Yeah, we send the monument come up. We'll see a house come up. Ooh, ooh, we need a house coming down immediately here. If this villager pops out and he doesn't put the house up, he's going to be idled. That's idled, right? Unless he... Okay, he's going to empower it with his, uh, with his house there. Thank you for the prime, Leop DSF. Appreciate you, my friend. First time watching a recorded... A recording of a video live. So excited. Yes! Yes! I'm so excited for you as well. This is going to be a fantastic game, I'm sure. House coming up. He's not going to be, he's not going to be pop blocked, but yeah, you, the, the, the way it works, and if you're, if you're wondering in terms of, um, in terms of house timings, is for Greek and for Norse, if you put the house down exactly on 15 of 15 population, the house takes 14 seconds to build, the villager takes 14 seconds to build. So if you put it exactly down when that villager starts, you will get that house up with one villager. For Egyptian, you have to put it down exactly on 14 population or 15 population uh, in order to get it up in time uh, because it takes 20, was it 20, 27 seconds? So one second less than the 28 seconds it will take to train the two villagers. So that thing, as we see now, Squatch moving over onto this, uh, onto this, Auroch over here, going to start eating that at some point here. He's just about to have the the food he needs to advance as well, but he wants more villages. Going up a little bit later than I would like here. I think going up this late really does give you leave you susceptible to some uh, pretty brutal one-town center regression here from the, from the Greek side of things. For example, if the Greek player goes for a 402 advance time into Hippocon straight away, you can see 345 coming, and he's probably going to be going for like a five minute advance time. The the Greek player can actually have, before you even get to the second age, four Hippocon, Ajax, and Chiron, and be on this town center. No amount of uh, shifting sands is going to allow that town center to get up. Uh, but we'll, but but obviously maybe not maybe not so obviously but chemo here not really known for uh, aggressive play he's much more of a boomer wants to play a little bit slow and I think that squash is uh, kind of metagaming him a little bit uh, as he knows that that's the case going to be advancing incredibly late here uh, to the classical age as he's throwing these houses down we see the Ajax trying to come in and cause some problems a little bit of a ghost building coming up but in the end, these villages should be completely fine. So we actually see Squash pulling off exactly on 200 wood there. Does he have any other upgrades? He's got himself pickaxe already. He's got husbandry. 
Unit's going to be coming in, starting to get some pressure done onto these villages. Okay. Villages going to have to pull back ever so slightly here. As the Ajax pulls back, Athena comes in. That gives a little boost to the Ajax here as the villagers are simply going to have to turn around. Shank, turn around, Shank. We will be seeing a wall coming up here on this location. Going to be trapping the Ajax in. Beautiful play here. I don't think the units can get out. They're going to have to go down the bottom way as... Uh, as Shadoof, or not Shadoof, Dark going to become a, it's the technology of, of, uh, of Dark. Dark coming in 50%. He's got a lot more time here to hang in on this base, and he does have an exit down the bottom, but uh, a nice and defensive base now for Squash has been secured. The town center will be able to come up very, very soon over on this location here. Kibo, on the other hand, going to be grabbing his own second town Crossing center here. right now as his, uh, as his Chiron, his, his Minotaur coming in to start bashing away. We see the Crossing Chiron here. coming down to the bottom side of the map here to, go, uh, to cause some pressure. This is something that uh, you really want to be doing as Hades here to prevent the town center from coming up. We see six villages plus the Pharaoh going to be throwing this town center down immediately. Shadoof and Plow coming through for Squash as the Minotaur gets pushed back. No real problems here. We do see the Chiron is in. Going to start putting some pressure onto this position over here. Uh, generally speaking, this one would be immediately shifting Sands away from uh, from this town center if it's uh, if it's Chemo here. But Squash here, going to just try and be a little bit... Uh, cute with his units because uh, the rest of the units are on the wrong side of the map here for Chemo as Chemo's not actually sent his guys around to uh, to defend this. As the Pharaoh going to come back in, going to start taking a couple of shots over here. Town Center is 100% getting up here. I definitely think that, I mean, if Chemo had played this a different way, he could have had a significant advantage going forward in this game. But... Alas, that is not the way the cookie crumbles here. As the town center is going to get up, all the villagers are going to be completely safe. They're going to come back over onto this location, taking a couple more hits, going to garrison in, start uh, empowering this one up as Chemo grabs the feathers of Fenrir. Uh, it, it's, it is a one-shot kill relic for villagers on the... Uh, what's, what are these farms here? It's an interesting, uh, interesting decision. Maybe a misclick on this location, but... Nonetheless, we see rain getting thrown down. Maybe he just doesn't want to put them on this side so they can be out of range of the Chiron from, from getting some damage done. As Squash throws up what I like to call a metric shit ton of farms here. 17 farms on this location. Came on the other hand, two town centers up. Is he going for a third town center? Is he going for units? Is he going for the heroic age? These are all the questions that need to be asked here. As... Uh, Schemos all over the map with his villagers getting as much as he can. We do see some incredibly forward built stable coming up from Chemo. Squash here doesn't see it. He doesn't actually know that there's a gold mine here. So right now Squash feels like he has to go over onto this gold mine, which uh, we do see that the Wadget is going to spot this, but Chiron, is Chiron over here? Surely Chiron's over here as that villager is going to go down. Uh, nice play here. The villager doesn't go down. The Chiron here has got 11 HP. Just turn around and attack the Chiron. Not going to go for it. But the villager still alive on this location here for Chemo. Going to be throwing up another stable over here as the Hippocon are going to start coming out. This is super, super aggressive. It doesn't necessarily... It won't necessarily mean a whole lot though because... Uh, effectively, Chemo, uh, Chemo's Hippocon are not going to be able to deal with the early pressure that a raw uh, Heroic Edge is going to come up with. And Squash here is going to have himself at least at least 100 population worth of Camelry out of just this gold mine alone. So he should be completely fine here to break through these stables, maybe get up a uh, Siege Works as well to knock these down and grab this, uh, grab this location for himself here. As now Chemo is throwing this down. I think Squash doesn't realize this Chiron's got 6 HP. I'm going to pull him back in and uh, sit underneath the town center. And potentially the town center here. Going to take out the Chiron. Nice little cheeky play there. Chiron goes down. As the uh, Wadger does take probably more damage than, than otherwise. A second monument coming up as well for Squash. Going to be going into some Pitsukos most likely. Or even just getting some... Uh, uh, some economic upgrades. Things like Sun-Dried Mud Brick. Going to be really good. The reduction in... Um, in cost of buildings, as we will be seeing these villagers going to be throwing up a Mikdol stronghold right in the face of these stables. Squash does not care uh, what Chemo could potentially have here. As Chemo is going to be pulling away of this location here, he realizes, yeah, that gold mine not going to be uh, not going to be so so good there. As the Migdal Stronghold going to come up and these two stables effectively going to be uh, useless here. It's not like he's Poseidon and he gets some militia out of them. Uh, he's just going to be sending a Sipicon elsewhere. 
As Kimo here, he's got, his, he's got his talents in his up. He's producing as best as he can. We do see that the uh, the Chiron is going to come in here and going to start taking down the Patsukos. Uh, squashes Rock. Technically here, if Kimo microed this, if all you have to do is get the Chiron underneath the Rock, and the Rock will not be able to get away. But Kimo isn't microing this at all, as the Rock going to be retreating back home here. Uh, and we will be seeing the... Patsukos here getting dropped. Maybe the Chiron going to get taken out here. This Kimo is going to be retreating back here. We will be seeing villagers shanking down these stables. It's, it's doing a little bit. It's actually doing quite a bit of economic damage to Squash here by doing this. If you say this this takes about 15 seconds uh, to take this out, and you have 16 villagers here, uh, you're probably... you're probably that, that amount of resource lost there is actually quite a lot. As we do see the Locust getting thrown down. Restoration to counter the Locust here. Fakimo not wanting to lose a single villager on that location. Probably a little bit of overkill, but uh, I like the idea. Uh, back to the amount of resources lost here. It's 100 resources lost for Kimo, but 15 villagers at 15 seconds. And it's 15 resources per uh, per villager there, in all honesty. So you're looking at uh, you're looking at more than 100 resources for sure on that location there. So nice nice play from Kimo putting some pressure onto Squash. But Squash now going to be looking for the raids as Kimo hasn't really set up his uh, his walls just yet. So he's going to be in a bit of problems here as we do see the villagers coming forward. Going to grab this Ford Town Center, try and claim a uh, a three to two Town Center advantage here. But that will force Squash into like. Kind of a position you almost don't want to be in as the Hades, which is a timing attack off two town centers with, with a Mythic Age uh, coming in and, and good economy behind it to boot. So we'll see what's going to happen there. As Squash moving around, sees the villagers on this location. He can attack anyway. those with the Chariot Archers, do whatever he wants, trying to micro many different locations uh, on this map here. Seeing how he can go as we do see the Patsukos coming back in onto this location. Going to snipe some Toxodes here, checking out the town center on the back. One play here that Squash could do is go for a Shifting Sands onto this town center to grab this location and uh, and start spamming Migdols and going straight onto the main base of Kimo, where he's starting to put farms. Uh, and then you can start pushing that off of that, really hurting Kimo's economy quite a lot as this town center just about up. We do see the villagers getting pushed off of this wood line over here, getting pulled back into the main base. Over there is Kimo's going to move down to the bottom side of the map here. The Chiron does spot that. But Sukos here trying to snipe that one down yet again. The Chariot Archer's doing a lot of damage over there, but not quite going to be able to kill off all too much. As the market getting thrown up now for Squash. Quite a lot of wood in the bank. Uh, not sure exactly what he's going to be doing with that one there. As he's got 27 villages of food as well, and that food is about to start skyrocketing. If we take a look at the upgrades, he's got himself Irrigation. He's got himself Shaft Mine. He's got himself Hand Axe and Husbandry. Those are the four... Uh, most important technologies to have for an Egyptian player. So he knows exactly what he needs. chemo has got his three town centers up. He's being raided. He's getting farms up everywhere. He's 98 of 148 population. Squash, 128 of 130 population. And he's going up through Osiris and getting fortified town centers at the same time. The reaction to that third town center was so perfect. Incredibly uh, incredibly correct way to play this when you get into this position is to get that that fortified town center. It puts you up to 140 population where your opponent on the three town centers generally doesn't have fortified town centers at this point in the game. And you are effectively equal in population. You get a timing with your tech, either with like a big god power or just like your technology here. We're going to have a son of Osiris helping out quite a bit. And that that location is going to be a, a very, very difficult spot to defend for Kimo. So we'll have to see how Kimo is going to go with that one there. He does have some some uh, Toxodes out, so maybe you can use those to help him take out the son of Osiris. A little bit of good micro might go his way. There's a villager's garrisoning into the town center over here. Popping over onto the wood line on this location. A couple more buildings getting thrown up over here as the units swing around this location. We see the Toxodes getting taken out. Villagers in the main base of Kimo getting cleaned up as well as uh, as Kimo trying to min defend on this location as he realizes the big attack is coming through. We see a whole bunch more military buildings getting dropped around this location here. There, This is obviously the place to attack. But the problem here for Squash is... It, 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 it does exist here. There is a problem. He's only got 3,000 gold left in this gold mine. If we take a look at the map, he doesn't know that there's a gold mine over here, but there is a gold mine. Okay, now he sees it. So he should be uh, he should be completely fine here uh, moving forward. But 
Uh, that's definitely going to be a raidable location over there in the future as the Mythic Age does come through. Son of Osiris does drop here. I'm interested to see if he gets upgrades straight away or not because I, I would get flood control straight away here maybe. Uh, and maybe gets a whole bunch of mummies out would be a really, really good way to play this as we see immediate catapults coming in onto this location. Uh, Squashies even like cut production a little bit or lost a whole bunch of units maybe on purpose getting value out of them but lost them in order to rebuild his army with maybe some stronger units he's not making mummies here which does make me a little bit like why not but he's going to be able to get himself catapult and start sieging this location down and Kimo on the other hand here he is stuck when well, he's not stuck he's going up Aphrodite but he's, he's kind of stuck in the classical age in the fact that if he was training units here he wouldn't be able to get to the heroic age so He's, he's deciding to probably sack this location in a way and maybe grab his town center back over here and be, uh, and be kind of fine here as you do see that Minotaur he does manage to get a good uh, a good little headbutt onto that location and the, the uh, Chariot Archer with a fall as well. So nice play there. The units sitting idly by over here potentially and maybe, just maybe, a curse push onto this could be a good way to play. But I think in the end here, playing as Hades in this position, what you might want to do is just simply retreat Say, take the location. We're grab, going to grab our town center over here. No worries. Go to Mythic Age yourself. And then maybe hit this with like Colossus or, or Artemis or something like this. Uh, and try and equalize there. But the thing is, Squash's economy is going to be absolutely gigantic here in this game. He's also getting himself Carpenters here as well. So he really wants some wood income to, uh, to spam out the Catapults and the Chariot Archers and get all the upgrades that he needs in this game as the Town Center is going to be getting taken down here incredibly quickly. The villagers are going to swoop in, grab that for himself. Not only that, look at this location here. A Migdol getting planted on this spot here is going to be absolutely huge for Squash to start sieging this Town Center. We do see the units already over here for Chemo. Uh, as the villager is going to come in, grab this town center, and we'll see how Kimo is going to be able to react to this as the town center coming up over here. F walls coming down on the bottom side of the map here for Kimo. A little bit late on these walls, if we're completely honest. If he walled this off early, he would have been able to delay these villagers on this gold mine and maybe be able to raid this while the villagers uh, and the army is are taking this town center down, getting a little bit of value out of his army while while he's uh, getting attacked. But right now, Kimo is literally just sitting back and doing a whole bunch of nothing here in this game. Allowing the heavy cavalry to come through onto this position. Going to start taking down the villagers over here on this gold mine. Beautiful raids here in this game from Squash. This is exactly what you need to do. Forcing out a curse there as the uh, as the villagers all get kept alive here. But uh, <laughs> that's a four cavalry curse. Not Well, not exactly bad value, but not exactly good value either here. As the unit's going to be coming through onto this location, we still have that shifting sands available here for Squash as well. So we can actually go for like a Titan here if he really wants to. As those Toxodes, they need to start focusing down the Son of Osiris, getting a super value here uh, on this uh, on this fight. As Kimo is not really paying attention over here, I'm not sure exactly what he's uh, what he's focusing on here, but he needs to get his heroes back out. We do see the Son of Osiris getting pulled here. Uh, doesn't even take any damage there; just decides to pull back in the perfect moment. As Kimo pulls back into his base here, and let's see what else is going on. Walls coming up everywhere. We do see a market attempting to come up here. One, four, five, six HP or fifteen hundred. As uh, Kimo can't actually afford to advance just yet, but look at this. Squash is just so absurdly far ahead. He's got four catapults out now. He probably doesn't need any more. And he actually cuts them. He's really nice play. He can get himself um, Siege Engineers here as well as the unit's pushing forward. He probably needs a little bit of something something to defend this because these catapults go down very, very quickly to the Heavy Prodromus. With Squash now motoring into this main base, he's got full villages, he's got the market set up in the corner, and he's starting the trade out. He is in such a ridiculously strong position in this game. As the archery range over here, going to be getting cleaned up. We do see the Son of Osiris getting pulled back ever so slightly here. But he is out of position at this point, and, and Kimo should be looking to get little bits of damage done while he's out of position here. Those Toxodes here, not really focusing on it. He's 525 HP, still very, very healthy here in this game, but this town center is about to go down, and we've got, like, Mass Patsu... I'm surprised we saw Mass, Mass Patsukos here from Squash as well. I would have thought going Osiris, Mass Mummy would have been better, but maybe the Patsukos in this matchup are just that much stronger than you would think, as Kimo 
decides he has to tap out here in the 17th minute not able to hold on that three towns and a boom here from chemo just not quite making a whole lot of sense in the end of the in the end of the day he didn't fortify this location he didn't try and defend it he didn't have any answer to the son of osiris uh he didn't really do much giving up the towns and grabbing this back one makes a lot of sense here if you're like going maybe mythic age here for some sort of like some sort of mythic age bonus i don't know what you would get here as uh, to help you out as uh, as Greek, but potentially you could go into maybe Heliopoli, get your get your uh, Perseus out to deal with these Psukos maybe. But I, I just don't know if this is quite the right way to play here. I would have really, really liked to see Kimo go for like a super aggressive play given Squash uh, goes for those late advance times and try and find some value out of that. Even just sticking all of his units onto this town center. If you see your opponent hunting over here on a, on on like an Oroch or something on this location really close to the town center, you can almost guarantee they're going to be going for that town center and sending all of your heroes and units over there can really, really hurt the RAR player. And the fact that Squash gets away with this in this game, uh, and I don't, feels very very mean and bad anyways gg well played by squash if you guys like this game please consider hitting the follow on the twitch if you're on the youtube hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys in the next game